I'm here in Guanajuato at the Pozo Ancestral, that it means the ancestral well. I'm here in the uh, middle of nowhere in Guanajuato, where Guanajuato meets Querétaro. And I'm here today to show you uh, one of the interesting things that led to people settling in this region. Now, there are many reasons that uh, nomadic peoples settle in a certain place, agriculture being one of them, the development of agriculture. But there's another one that's tied to these strange rocks that you see around me here. And the reason why people are still here today and that's not just agriculture, but another thing that's very important, especially in the desert, is water. And here, even though it's the dry season, you can see everything around me is green. And there is water. Beautiful, clean, blue water. And not just water but boiling water. This water is incredibly hot. I don't know if you can see all of the steam that is coming off of this, but this is a natural geyser. This is geothermically heated water, heated by a volcano and the, uh, the magma that's trapped under the earth. And it's heating up this water, which is coming from a spring and delivering it here to this plane. I don't know if you can see, but over there, there are some people enjoying the water and they're sort of bathing and uh, I'm not sure what they're doing, but I'll go say hello to them in a second. But it looks like this water that comes out of the geyser here goes down into the spring through that area over there. And this was a very important place because this illustrates why a lot of the places in central Mexico were originally settled, and why the Chupicuaro culture came to Carretero and to Guanajuato wasn't just for agriculture. Out here in the desert, you need water. And right now is actually the dry season. It hasn't rained uh, in months and months, but around me, everything is green. And it's possible to farm around here because like many places in Mexico, it's volcanic. And the volcanic activity, the magma under the earth is geothermically heating the spring water that comes out here and it creates this boiling pond that you see behind me, a geyser. And if you look over here, through this sulfur, this sulfur stinking steam, you can see that it's beautiful uh, water that's been filtered through the earth, it's been heated to boiling temperatures, and um, here it is available for people to use. You can probably cook food directly in a pot over there because it's it's incredibly hot. Over here, uh, so you can take some of this water to bathe with and it looks like this stream, you can still see the steam coming off of it. It goes down over there, over there, and there's a bunch more of these rocks over there and people bathing. This one seems uh, to have seen better days, but you can see that there's still a little bit of water bubbling up out of there. There's a little bit of steam and uh, here around it, it creates this uh, sort of accretion disk of minerals that come out of the, of the water as it's bubbling up. And all around me, you can see that there's more of these sorts of uh, platforms that have holes in the middle and those are completely natural. That's just the result of the of the water bubbling up and forming this pile of middle minerals around it. I strayed from the path a bit, and over here there's a bunch of rocks, loose rocks, that uh, would be good for building materials.
here we have a model of the red paint that would have been on it, as well as the plaza. There's a child. Alright, here I am at El Cerrito in the city of Carretero. This pyramid is in the middle of a city. And I'm just on the uh, outlying buildings of the site right now. This is the obsidian altar in here. Uh, here's the platform on which the building would have been situated. There they found a bunch of uh, obsidian objects. Sharp objects, knives, arrowheads, and that sort of thing. As you can see, it's totally overgrown with cactus now. Garambuyo, which would have been a food for the people who lived here. And who are those people? Those were the originally the Chupicuaro culture, who uh, settled in the valley of Carretero because of uh, all of the water here, the hot springs, and uh, just being a very pleasant location overall and good for agriculture. So they came here and they had a culture which uh, involved building platforms for ritual purposes, single platforms, and they had uh, very elaborate burial rituals that involved lots of pottery, um, burying lots of objects, and so this site began as one of those platforms, but it very quickly grew uh, to be one of the largest pyramids in uh, this entire region and a lot of areas of Mexico. It is larger than the one at Chichen Itza. Now here we have a size comparison of the pyramids of... Uh, this one is in Tula, this one in Chichen Itza. This one is the El Cerrito, which is here, larger than the one in Chichen Itza, but still done in the typical Toltec style with uh, the Teotihuacan pyramid over there. Over here you have some cladding on the side of the building, these stones there. And that's uh, very typical of Otomi architecture. And you may be wondering if uh, it was the Chupicuaro culture who first settled here, then why does it have Otomi architecture? And the answer to that is that uh, it was not just the Chupicuaro culture here. But this site was inhabited beginning uh, in the pre-classic period in uh, at least 300 BC, though probably much earlier. Uh, they found things from 300 BC and evidence that this building was here in 300 BC in some form, probably a lot smaller. And uh, after the Chupicuro people, there were uh, Lots of empires rising and falling throughout the rest of Mexico. You had the Teotihuacanos and the Toltecs and uh, the Mixtecs and the Otomi and uh, the cultures of people who lived in Comanfort and San Miguel de Allende and uh, El Coporo and Cañada de la Virgen. All of these cultures all around phasing in and out of history. Yet this was inhabited the entire time. So you had not just the Chupicuaro people here, but you had the Teotihuacanos and the Toltecs and the Otomi and the Chichimecas and the Peripecha as well. All of them came here and they contributed to making this a bigger, better, fancier pyramid. This site was still inhabited when the Spanish came and murdered and enslaved everyone. And as late as 1632, there were still offerings being made here. You can see that the cladding on the outer layer is uh, in that typical Otomi style. And the Otomi were some of the people that lived here when the Spanish came. The pyramid would have been red, of course. And there, in the, about the middle, you can see that there's some rocks sticking out, and that would have been uh, places where plaster was attached, and there would have been sculptures here. There you have the grand staircase, and on top, that's where a temple would have stood in uh, ancient times, 
However, that is a Spanish fort. When the Spanish got here, they didn't know that there was a pyramid here. They just saw a big hill and they saw that there were um, people doing rituals there quite often. And they decided to build a fort there just because it provides a very good view of the valley. Now you can imagine from the pyramid, it's obviously a better view. Now, as I said, uh, this is in the middle of a city. You can see the city behind me and it's a Sunday. So today adm admission is free. Normally it's about uh, $2 and 50 cents in US currency, 50 pesos, but today it's free. And that's why it is so crowded here. You can see that uh, normally when I visit some ancient Chupicuaro sites that uh, I am the first person to have been there in a week, according to the guest book that I sign. But uh, here you can see that there's people over there. There's some people standing behind me over there. And there were even some people in the museum earlier. So it's uh, practically a beehive of activity for a Chupicuaro site. And here in front of the pyramid, we have this grand plaza and down there, another one. And I'll show you that in a second. Here in front of the pyramid, you can see that there would have been some buildings and here are the outlines of their foundations and where the walls would have stood. There's a guy standing by that tree, security guard for scale. Here as well, a foundation of a great building. Over here would have been a temple. And over here, the plaza of the sculptures. Now, some of these sculptures still exist in the museum, but you can see that they would have lined all around this sunken plaza. So here, there would have been many uh, great rituals performed. dances and things would have stretched all the way over there and here we have the remnants of the temple and this is called the temple the room of the four altars and they believe that it would have been painted red with murals in the background uh, and here there they found the incense burners here we have some incense holders Also an incense holder with a lid. And they believe that uh, people would come here and worship their gods. This was a very important ceremonial site. From here, it's also pretty clear what the temple would have looked like on the top of the pyramid when it was originally built, even though that is the Spanish fortress. Down here in the valley, well, not the valley. Down here in the uh, in the plaza, where all of the rituals would have taken place, you can see that the temple of the four altars would loom over you, as well as behind me here. There's uh, would have been other buildings, perhaps a palatial residence, if in fact a king lived here, though. We're not, I, I personally am not sure about that. There's another building over here, the remnants of one. Um, we clearly have collapsed walls and it's been in better shape before. And lastly, over here we have something uh, called the Altar of the Skulls. The Altar of the Skulls. Well, you can imagine what happened there. That was a human sacrificial altar. And uh, it looked like this. I was standing over there earlier uh, in front of the pyramid, front in 
quotation marks because here was the plaza and here the altar of the skulls and you can see that from this side it's even larger because this whole plaza is itself built up like a platform. You can see all of the cladding, that there are some channels for uh, drainage, for water, that there would have been more staircases in various places over there and there. And you can't see the rest of the pyramid because it's not excavated. The back of it and the other side uh, were never excavated, not open to the public, and they're still covered with cacti and trees. It gives you an idea of how it originally would have looked. It would have just looked like a large hill. It is the dry season and it gets very dusty and windy and that wind blows around and that covers the pyramid. So when it was found, it was completely covered in dust and dirt. And it wasn't until the year 1941 that someone noticed that there were some walls in that hill and they started digging around a little bit but it wasn't until 1984 uh, that someone made a sketch of what what this entire area might be, the outlines of the hills and potential structures. And it wasn't until the 90s that uh, excavation started. It turned out that there was a huge pyramid in the city of Carrethro all along, which had been inhabited since 300 BC at least. Here at the Altar of the Skulls, uh, more than 50 skulls of human sacrifice victims, males aged or, uh, 18 to 40, were found here and could very likely be uh, warriors from enemy tribes. As the Toltecs did inhabit this place during the height of its, uh, of its building, and this was actually considered a Toyan, the same as in the city of Tula, where I went to in another video. This was a very important site, uh, ceremonially, religiously, also politically, and uh, for the Toltecs, uh, war and religion and politics were all very much intertwined, and they had a very martial, uh, war-obsessed civilization. Pottery. And so that also involved human sacrifices of great warriors, usually the other guys. Uh, the area immediately around this site is uh, protected and there's nothing built here, but just um, a little bit further, there, the city begins and there's uh, streets and uh, shops and houses and parking garages and whatever you want, but uh, not a lot of it has been excavated so far. Half of the pyramid, this plaza, the altar of the skulls, but uh, even if I climb here and point the camera over here past the room of the four altars, you can see that it's uh, kind of just a wilderness still. And there are vague outlines of buildings all around here, but they haven't been dug up yet. It is unfortunate that uh, that the sites of central Mexico don't get uh, nearly as much attention as the ones in the Valley of Mexico or, say, the Mayan structures in the Yucatan, because there are a lot of uh, big ones here, important ones, ones with a rich and interesting history. And because uh, not a lot of people know about them, they don't get a lot of attention, they're not in the media, they're not on people's Instagram feeds, and uh, they don't get a lot of funding for excavations. But at least this one sort of dug up, not really restored. A restored wall uh, gives you an idea of the outline of the plaza. Here, just a bunch of loose bricks, rocks. Probably would have been part of something, but um, who knows now. All right, well, that's it from El Cerrito in the city of Querétaro, in the state of Querétaro, in Mexico. 
and here in the uh, exit of the park you can see one of those buildings in its unexcavated form clearly a very square um, unusual mound needs some work